So this video here has been downloading. Actually, let me go over here real quick. So it's 8.54 on my laptop. It documents the far the farthest it's got is 54%, but it's resetting on my phone. It says two hours remaining. I started uploading this at five o'clock. It got to 54%. which is still on this screen. If I refresh it, let's see what happens since I'm recording this. No, it still holds 54%. But I did it on my phone, on this phone. And this phone has it at now 16% with two hours remaining. It is a, I wonder if it's gonna reset. Let's see what happens here. It is four, it's five gigs pretty much interest. Wow, I don't know that big either. Let's see. No. Oh. So it stayed at 17%. But it's basically been uploading now for four hours. Oh, it just dropped to one hour right now. It's a 44, I think actually a 41 minute recording. Just interesting. And I did find this video that I'm watching right now. And oh, look at the time 23. It's my number, baby. Let's go to 22 because that sounded pretty interesting. That was kind of my whole point. He controls this whole block. He probably has a nice trophy. And then he rents these things out. I don't think it's a larger than an attic. Mm -hmm. So this is where I differ. The point of my video, I don't really say it explicitly or overtly, but Obviously, as by from the title, I'm alluding that organized crime plays a far bigger role in um, distributing motorhomes to the homeless community. Not so much because they want rent money or they make a profit off of the homeless from cash, but because it's a method of quasi enslavement in that, okay, look, they know you're a piece of shit that you can't pay rent. So here's what you're gonna do to cover your rent is do, you know, such and such activity for us, whatever it may be. Or we're going to penalize you the way organized crime penalizes you. So that's another point that I make in my video is that a, a lot of homeless people, psychology is all about projecting, okay? And projecting has to do with reversing reality in order to, uh, like a, a mirror projects the image backwards, okay? So in the mirror, the options to view are on the other side. In reality, they're on this side. 
So projection works basically the same way. And when you have this homeless people saying they just want to be left alone, they just want to be free, they want to, <coughs> they have like a sense of independence. No, no, no. They are driven to, internally driven to organized crime, which is far more stringent and dominating and I know you got Orwell right there, Orwellian, in that they supervise, monitor, and have a lot more strict demands with a lot more strict penalties than what we'd consider civilian society. So pandering to homeless people's cries for whatever the fuck they're saying they're doing it is dismissing all of the integrity of modern science-based psychiatric academia and knowledge and just saying okay well yeah sure we've got all of this stuff documented and recorded but hey this is a different case and we'll take this person at the word why what reason do we have to doubt them that all they want to do is make the best for their life. No. Because it sounds good. And actually, while I got this up, let's just go over here. Oh, no, I'll go right here. Make it easier to find. And they stick to their game. I just want, I just want to be, I just want my freedom. You know, I just want to be, you know, if I had the opportunity, if I had a chance. So this is, um, Timothy McLeary, or sorry, Timothy Leary. Uh, when two individuals interact, the quote unquote sicker person determines the relationship. The more extreme and rigid the person, the greater his or her interpersonal quote-unquote pull, the stronger his or her ability to shape the relationship with others. The withdrawn catatonic, the irretrievable criminal, and the compulsively flirtatious charmer can inevitably provoke the expected response from a more well-balanced quote-unquote other. We meet here a lowest common denominator process, a Gresham's law of interpersonal collisions. Sick people control the interpersonal interaction. The quote unquote sicker or the more maladaptively rigid, the more power to determine the nature of the relationship. Timothy Leary, The Politics of Self-Determination. So giving them their space is clinically, scientifically, the mistake. And all I want to do is get my video up. How's it? Almost there. 34%. And I'm trying to go to sleep because I normally fall asleep but way before 9 o'clock. Last night I fell asleep at 8 o'clock. So that's my point. Oh, but uh, so organized crime and the organized criminal network that currently controls Los Angeles. Okay, it's not just one because Los Angeles is the fifth biggest economy. So, you know. It's, you know, organized crime has become more organized in that competitors have realized that it's a big enough pie to, it's a big enough pie where you couldn't carry it all on your own anyways. So you might as well uh, pony up and work with each other. So you have an alliance between the Russian mob which is represented in Los Angeles by the Armenian faction that runs Glendale, the Mexican mafia, 
which is also known as La M, which controls all, every single Sur 13 Hispanic gang in the entire Western or West, uh, West Coast, including throughout the rest of the country, really, who is very sophisticated and very organized. And you don't understand how intelligent and coordinated the Mexican mafia is and how ruthlessly effective they have been in seizing control bit by bit of a, essentially the entire Hispanic gang culture throughout the U.S. Well, not the entirety, but basically you're talking about like an, an 80% monopoly over every Hispanic gang throughout the United States of America. Um, on top of the latest entry into this pool of organized crime, and that's Cartel Jalisco New Generation, who in the last few years has done a genius organized crime maneuver and gone from having their home base in Chicago to totally, completely having 100% monopoly over Los Angeles. And part of the way that they did that because they just did it in the last few years and they took it away from Cartel Sinaloa was that they realized that Cartel Sinaloa was relying exclusively on Hispanics. So they had to come in through the back door. So their first back door entry was a homeless community. And then they were able to organize Crips, which for decades were enemies amongst themselves, bitter enemies amongst themselves, brutal enemies amongst themselves, but now have nationwide Crips have been restructured into one conglomerated superstructure that was all done by Cartel Jalisco New Generation in order to facilitate their takeover of Los Angeles in particular, but California in general. And and they have a they have a vision that goes beyond California too. There, there are no Crips whatsoever or Bloods in Chicago. And um and the and then Cartel Jalisco was able to broker a deal with the Mexican Mafia that then allowed them basically an introduction through Armenian Power X3, which is a bridge between the Russian mob and the Mexican Mafia uh, that connects to Armenian organized crime, which is like the Italian Mafia. Now, the success of Armenian organized crime is that Armenian organized criminals project, use marketing to make Armenian Power X3 look like Armenian organized crime, but there are only 250 members of that and they are a front because behind the veil of the front is a organized criminal network of professional Armenians that is exactly the same type of system that we have traditionally seen in Italian organized crime and that's high power lawyers and high power property owners and high power business owners that all project a sense of uh, legitimacy so anyways i'm done